officer, manager, and uh, I'd just like to welcome you all here for uh, the Deaf History presentation. We're going to let the presenters introduce themselves. Um, so with that, I'll just turn it over. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming today to our Lunch and Learn from Bay. Today we're talking about deaf history. I'm Molly Wizell peterson And I am Sherry Paulson. Again, thank you so much for coming. Wow. Do you see these quotes? That deaf people can't learn. Sadly, many, many years ago, 364 BC or so, nobody had any ideas how to teach deaf children. They thought they couldn't function. They had no idea how to communicate with anybody that was deaf. So they labeled all of those children animals. And they had no idea how to have deaf education until many, many years later, the 1800s, finally there was a girl that started this. This girl you see in the picture is Alice Cogswell. <coughs> she really was the first deaf girl to be educated. She lived in Hartford, Connecticut, and at that time there was no education for deaf children. People tried desperately to figure out how to communicate even with her. <coughs> she met or was acquainted with uh, a gentleman named Thomas uh, Gallaudet. Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. He realized there was no education, no schools for deaf children. So Alice's father asked Thomas if he would be willing to travel to France where they had their first deaf school in Europe. So Thomas was willing to go and travel to France and met a gentleman by the name of Lorette Claire. And he was a teacher of sign language. Thomas and Lorette met each other. Thomas learned some sign language and then traveled back to America with Lorette Claire. This gentleman, Laurent Claire, uh, was a deaf man living in Paris. He was originally from Lyon and uh, became deaf at a young age. Uh, he was a very small boy. He fell actually into their, the family fireplace and uh, lost both his sense of hearing and his sense of smell. Uh, they eventually sent him, his family sent him to the Royal Institute in Paris, the Royal Institute for the Deaf in, Par in Paris and uh, when he was about 12, where he began to learn. He graduated from that school and then uh, was, uh, well, the Royal Institute then invited him to begin teaching at the school as an assistant teacher. So he worked with the children there. It was not long after that, uh, maybe a couple of years after he'd begun to teach there, that um, he met Thomas Gallaudet and the two then came to America. Upon arrival, they established the first school for the deaf, American School for the Deaf, in Hartford, Connecticut. And remember we talked about Alice Cogswell a little bit ago in that first photo? She was one of the seven students to go to that first deaf school in Connecticut. Gallaudet was the principal until 1830. At that time, the school, American School for the Deaf, was a model for other schools in the United States. These are just a, a few photos of what classes looked like. The statue on the right-hand side is Thomas and Alice Cogswell. They're very famous now. And that is in front of the residential school in Hartford, Connecticut. Edward Minor Gallaudet uh, had, had grown up in that deaf school environment. Uh, he uh, 
decided to establish the Columbia Institute in Washington, D.C. For, for deaf children. And um, um, which later then became Gallaudet College. He named the college after his own father, Thomas Hopkins what? Gallaudet. <coughs> because Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet had been involved with the establishment of the first school for the deaf in America. Edward Minor Gallaudet was the president of Gallaudet College for 40 years, 46 years. This is a second, second school in Washington, D.C. It was the Columbia Institute for the Deaf and Blind Students. Blind as well. And it was founded in 1864. It was an opportunity for good educate, education for deaf students. Students <coughs> would have to leave their own state and travel to Washington, D.C. and leave their parents. Now, many years later, it's called the Model Secondary School for the Deaf. MSSD nowadays. And it is still in Washington, D.C. Currently, they have Gallaudet College for many years, finally changed their name to Gallaudet University in October of 1986. Opportunity for good education for deaf people in Washington, D.C. Alexander Graham, Bell. Alexander Graham Bell is a name familiar to you. He worked at, uh, as a teacher of deaf children for many years, but found it uh, very difficult to communicate with them, and uh, began to develop uh, a, a piece of equipment that would enable them to hear better or, or enable communication to happen more readily. But it still didn't, didn't work. It was, it, it was not effective for teaching deaf children or communicating with deaf children. Uh, as you know, it, 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 uh, it was basically en route to inventing the invention of the telephone. You know who Alexander Graham Bell is, don't you? Yeah. He invented the telephone? <coughs> yeah. OK. There are two deaf groups, and they are quite divided. There's an oralist group and a manual group, and that's been happening for many, many years. It's a strong divide. The oral group says people can't learn sign language at all. They are not allowed, and mostly those children have hearing parents. In the manual group, mostly they're deaf families or deaf... Um, generations of deaf, deafness in their families so 